Good evening, brethren. Well, this evening, this evening as we've gathered together, I want to declare, declare to you that we have boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Uh, I want to declare to you that we have a new and a living way. That uh, we, we have a, a highway of holiness. Uh, we have a consecrated way that has been prepared before us. That uh, uh, th this is a way through which Jesus is bringing many sons to glory. Uh, we have heard uh, so far today of these these things spoken of. Uh, I, I want to exhort us this evening as we begin our, our consideration of the things of God uh, with these three things that the apostle mentions in our text. And this is going to be in the tenth chapter of Hebrews, verses nineteen through twenty-five. Uh, specifically, he says, "Let us draw near. Let us hold fast." And and let us consider. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. Uh, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Firstly, let us draw near. Uh, this is the context in which we have met together this evening, brethren. Knowing that we have this acceptance. Knowing that we have entered into this new and this living way. With this, uh, We have taken advantage of this access that we have unto the Father. That, that we have by faith. That tonight we have come with the knowledge that we are accepted in the Beloved. That, that tonight we have come uh, knowing that we can approach our Father without, the, our, without fear of being rejected by Him. Uh, th this, this knowledge that, that he, he does accept us, that we can come unto Him with this confidence and assurance, it, it draws us to Him this evening. Uh, we desire to come and to, to be able to have this sweet fellowship and with, fellowship with Him this evening. Uh, we have come and we have tasted that the Lord is good. And we, can we cannot help but come and, and take of the things that He has prepared for us this evening. And this evening that the Lord has prepared for us a table in, in the midst of our enemies, so to speak. Uh, even in this present world where uh, the men are drawing back unto perdition, and where it seems like there hardly is an escape from the wilderness that's all around us, this, this meeting is like an oasis, so to speak, that is, that is prepared in the, in the middle of the wilderness. And uh, I, I want to exhort you this evening to not allow anything to exempt you from this fellowship. Uh, to use the hymns of the, uh, the words of the hymn writer, keep the way clear, let nothing between. Uh, well, we've all experienced this in the past that uh, the wicked one will attempt, especially in the assembly, to get our thoughts on on something other than what's being spoken of. Um, I exhort you this evening to do your due diligence to be disciplined in your thought. If you're, if you're disturbed by troubling circumstances that you find yourself in this evening, um, I exhort you to uh, um, consider the sufferings of this present time and, and, and compare that to the glory that will be revealed in you. I, I think that if you do that, you'll find that those things aren't worthy to be compared. If you're weary this evening, uh, shake yourself, because the, the same God who made your mortal body, He's able to quicken your mortal body. And uh, the, uh, realize this evening, we, we realize that the flesh lusts against the Spirit, but we also realize that the Spirit lusts against the flesh. And, and uh, which one of these is, is more powerful? Uh, the, the, the flesh is not willing, but, but, but the Spirit is willing this evening, so... Let's, let's lean upon that. And let us hold fast this evening, brethren. We will hear the Word of God spoken this evening, and we will have an opportunity to be able to express ourselves and our own insights concerning what has been said. And let us use this time. Let us, let us take advantage of this time to strengthen our hold on the things that God has promised to those who love Him. 
Um, let us be willing participants and not mere spectators. Uh, we know that this is the manner of salvation. It, it requires this upkeep. It requires a certain amount of violence to, to be able to take hold of it uh, on the part of those who, are, who have entered in. Uh, and we, we enter in also knowing that uh, as we put our hand to the plow, that is when the Lord empowers us. That, that as we run the race that is set before us uh, with patience, that is when God grants us the strength to be able to, to, uh, to run. That, that as we press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, that's, that's when He gives us the grace to be able to jump over any hurdles that, that lie between us and that mark, so to speak. And lastly, let us consider one another to provoke unto, unto love and good works. Now, I'm, sh I'm sure that you've all noticed that when we meet together, uh, we receive things that we can't receive on our own. Yeah. It seems to me like there's, uh, there's like an opening of the storehouse that, that doesn't seem to happen on, on an individual level. We all receive our own things, and, and we, we bring this to the assembly. Um, th this is because... Uh, there's like a certain environment which exists when the brethren have come with the intention of blessing one another with their preparations and just with the general manner of their conversation toward one another. We meet actually recognizing our need for one another. And all of this within the context of the purpose of God in Christ Jesus. Realizing that we really are perfected independently of one another. That our ultimate destiny is not to stand before God as individuals, but to, to stand before Him in aggregate as the, as the body of Christ, as, as the bride, the Lamb's wife, as the new Jerusalem, as a habitation of God in the Spirit. So, so this evening, I, I, men, I exhort you to consider the brethren. Oh, whether you're speaking or whether you're hearing, that you may minister unto edification and that you might provoke unto love and to good works by the manner of your speech or, or by your attentive listening. I also want to encourage those who may have something to say, don't withhold your insights from the brethren. Uh, this is actually, this falls under the banner of considering one another to, to provoke. Amen. That, uh, recognize that your comment this evening, this may, very well may be what a brother or a sister needs this night to provoke them unto good works. Yeah. And on the other hand, let us also consider the brethren by crucifying the flesh or, or by putting our body under, recognizing that it's actually possible for us to, to give the flesh the advantage uh, in the assembly if we're not diligent to guard against it this evening. So finally then, brethren, let us do all of these things uh, in the fact that the mind, w with the fact in mind that the day is fast approaching. Uh, that, that this may in fact be the day and the hour this evening. So I, I exhort you this evening to do these things with a certain sense of urgency. A certain sense of readiness, realizing that we really don't have time for luxury or laziness. Uh, we must be alert in these things. And they, these things aren't suggestions, or these things are necessities. So let us, let's pray this evening, brethren.